Hello everyone, I am Dr. Priyank Patel and welcome back to the Bombay Spine Society Case of the Month series. We have Dr. Nikhil Arbatti, a consultant spine surgeon attached to multiple uh, uh, hospitals all around Bombay, uh, namely the Nanavati Hospital, Bhate Hospital and Raheja Hospital. Uh, so he is going to share an interesting geriatric case with us. Thank you Priyank and thank you to BSS and good morning to everybody. So today's case is about a 85 year old, more than 85 year old lady who presented with facetal instability. And the main dilemma is whether to operate her or not. So looking at her clinical picture, she is an 88 year old widow, complained with bilateral leg pain and main pain was on turning and getting up and on walking. She first consulted me in December, 2019. And when that time she had come, she had very minor leg pain symptoms and minimal complaints of turning and getting up. She is a very active woman who used to go for local satsang and traveling outside with her friends and all. But that time in December, we managed her with minimal amount of painkillers and just gabapentin. But since lockdown, she has been restricted at home and has been totally homebound. So subsequent consultations were done with the patient's sons. And basically the problem was that the patient, as she was homebound, could not come for consultation. The chief complaint as told by the relatives was she was severely restricted in walking, was having difficulty in turning and getting up. The back pain, which was negligible in 2019, had slowly aggravated. So we started with the low, um, in our uh, protocol of conservative line of treatment, giving gabentin, pregabentin, and also some physio, which for home physio. But we also started with some muscle relaxant and didn't give NSIDs initially. All the subsequent follow-up with the relatives, and they were always saying the patient was showing minimal improvement and not uh, significant improvement. These were the MRI pictures. As we see the T2 sagittal images, at the L4, L5 level, there is a minimal instability. And if you see the axial cuts at T2, we see the L4-5 fullness of the facetal effusions with a facetal cyst at the left-hand side. The other levels were not so significantly stenosed. These were the X-rays, the AP and the lateral with the degenerative facetal arthritis and the listhesis. And these were the dynamic X-rays which we had advised. So now the dilemma that you are facing after two months of conservative line was that she was still having pain in both legs. She was not able to walk more than five minutes at home. The back pain was increasing gradually. She was not responding to all the oral medications. And the hindrances were treating further were her age, about 88 years old, and stenosis was not so severe, only a mild subtle listosis. So what we decided was we did a DEXA score also additionally, we found out a DEXA score to be minus 3.7. We started on terapeutide and some calcium supplements. So now she was on terapeutide, calcium supplements, ultraset, gamentine, palmages, the muscle relaxant along with a home physiotherapy of tense and exercises. This was going on for almost three, four months now and the pain relief was just 30%. The Ultimately, the relatives came and said that she wants a better quality of life being such an active woman and 88 year old, even though homebound, she didn't want to be restricted being dependent upon anyone. So the options to further line was either to go ahead and give some steroids, go for a pain management or a surgical intervention. Now, each had its drawback and advantages. Steroids, they may have reduced the pain, but because it looked to be a minor instability and this, this is doubtful of a long-term effect. Also, giving in an 88-year-old lady steroids was a little bit of a uh, thing, especially since she was not coming for visits. Pain management, we could have thought about giving an epidural block along with a facetal block, but I doubted that it would have given a good relief uh, considering the fact that she had weak bones, also the fact that the facetal effusion was there, and the fact that she was having pain or more of an instability type when she got up and then she started walking. So the pain management, even if she had tried, would not have given her a long-term pain relief. A surgery, even though would have been thought about, but the hindrances were the age, the fact that she had weak bones, was started on therapeutic just two and a half months back. Also, how would the post-operative outcome be? Because we have seen that post-operative, some old patients complain of severe pain, the muscles are weak, they have pain because of that. So even a minimal invasive decompression or minimal stabilization with decompression was not sure whether it would have given an adequate pain relief. Even the patient and the relatives were not completely convinced for a surgical line of treatment. Looking at the literature, there are just two worthwhile articles which are found which are relevant to this. Both of them were for a series of patients about 70 year old. One of them said that minimal invasive decompression physiotherapy for lumbar stenosis in geriatric patients gives almost the same kind of relief as the physiotherapy itself. And the other was that effect of minimal invasive techniques and physiotherapy gives a little bit of a better relief in the medium term, but a long-term outcome was not sure whether it would have given good relief or not. So with the articles not exactly saying whether the 
surgery by itself doing a minimal invasive would have given a good outcome or not or doing uh, only physiotherapy would have been a good outcome it was a surgeon's prerogative it was based upon the surgeon whether he wanted to do anything or not and how the patient was accepting the line of treatment now each and every option was explained and each and every option was told what were the pros and cons so ultimately the patient being a proper uh, educated lady who was very active she decided to go ahead with the surgical line of treatment we had some challenges intraoperatively first of all the anatomical lung maps were not so proper because of mild scoliosis and facet arthritis there was a facetal effusion with cyst on one side due to which the dura had thinned out so it was a little critical that we should do not have any dural tear especially in an old age patient but we got a very satisfactory uh, uh, screw hold because of the terapeutic the sclerosis was already forming and we got a very adequate decompression uh, through unicortal approach doing a bicortal decompression outcome her leg pain really improved dramatically in the first one month it's down from 8 by 10 to 1 by 10 the back pain is also reducing we are continuing with terapeutic and calcium supplements as of now and she is right now walking independently with a uh, belt but without any walker and she could walk 15 to 20 minutes at a stretch in her house the old age is not a determinant for a minimal invasive spine surgery provided the comorbidities if they are there either they should be very well controlled or they should be minimal you should have a very proper conservative line of trial given you should first of all tick all the boxes that whatever you should try that you have tried out your medications physiotherapy Uh, making the bone strength optimal, and then if everything is not giving an adequate result, then to think about going ahead with the surgery. So informed decision by a patient after proper counselling that is what is required to get a good outcome for the surgery. I think this was yeah. an excellent case from your side. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. So uh, although a simple problem, but there are so many other challenges that are there. Like a one level instability is like a cakewalk for a spine surgeon, but the other peripheral factor factors are so much. One is the lockdown and the pandemic uh, old right. people with bad uh, bones osteoporosis uh, fragile uh, sarcopenia then uh, of course the challenge of uh, conservative treatment during uh, pandemic is also a big problem because therapists are not able to go home they are not able to come uh, to the clinics and of course the disability of not able to walk for more than 5 minutes also uh so all of these things need to be uh, seen with and i think you tackled it in a very excellent way uh, any particular challenges uh, you know preparing for surgery which you would tell the viewers to be looking at so first of all like if you are deciding to go ahead with a surgery in a, uh, a geriatric patient about the age of 75 80 first of all check the bone densitometry because in indian population we have patients who ladies especially about the age of 55 60 have osteoporosis so check the bone densitometry preferably if you could be starting around some calcium supplements or some bone building uh, medications before you decide to do for a surgery be it a minimal invasive decompression or a stabilization that actually gives you a good outcome of surgery secondly her comorbidities make sure that all the comorbidities are well managed if they have but like diabetes or if they have asthma then make sure that the steroid medications are reduced the diabetes is well controlled because if the diabetes is somewhere around 250 300 then we don't get a good outcome of surgery and thirdly if there is a degenerative scoliosis then always make sure that what you are going to operate how much is it going to affect the balance of the uh, spine or not so preferably if you are doing a, in a degenerative scoliosis and still you want to go and operate then try to avoid instrumentation or fusion so that you don't imbalance the spine do minimal invasive decompression because that way you will not be instabilizing the spine but doing a decompression where you'll be giving a adequate uh, removal of the compression of the nerves at the same time in those patients counseling will have to be more rather than what you're doing an in instrumentation because some remnant of back pain can be so i would say osteoporosis comorbidities and looking at the spinal balance these are the three things that you need to do for geriatric patients counseling and looking at and then go with the surgeon right thank you so much for sharing it with us uh until thank next you. time